All righty. <laughs> I don't know why it feels so good to say that. Um, it's been a long time since I've made like a proper video about Canada's Wonderland. Um, I know the podcast has still been going on, but yeah, a lot's been going on in my life. Like truthfully, a lot. Um, and a lot of it centers around Canada's Wonderland. A lot of it centers around, you know, the channel. Um, and then there's some outside. But nonetheless, um, I, I want you guys to know that uh, there's been lots of discussion going on about Amusement Insiders and its future, um, what I want for the channel, and kind of like these amazing, like I, I stress amazing ideas that I have for the channel. Some of them are old, some of them are new, um, and some of them are the same that are going on right now. So don't fret, nothing will change that you guys enjoy currently. But I thought what better way to discuss everything than kind of explaining my thought process and my anxiety um, to you guys. Uh, so I know a lot of you know my channel from the very beginning, and a lot of you don't, but I started Amusement Insiders literally because I lost my 11-year career. <laughs> I got laid off um, a bit ago, or ages ago, I don't even know, like it's been like six, seven years, um, from an 11-year career that I was in love with, like absolutely in love with, and had zero write-ups, like, it was, like, my dream, I drank the Kool-Aid, I, like, preached this uh, company, everything, um, and I guess, you know, when you work there for 11 years, and my district manager 20 years, and she got laid off, and then I got laid off, uh, it, w it was a culture shock. Um, luckily, I, I received, you know, a really big payout, and I was able to not work for two to three years. And in those two to three years, Amusement Insiders literally blossomed um, from spotting the track to making like daily construction updates, daily construction updates, and going to the park every single day. And back then, I only went to the park for 30 minutes. I'd drive all the way up, go in, film a construction update, and leave. <laughs> that is what consisted of Amusement Insiders. And then slowly, I met people, and people knew me and I got to talking and they got to talking and slowly but surely uh, like a family was forming and some people were permanent fixtures in my life and some people were temporary and this was a lesson that I had to learn and am still learning and that is one of my biggest struggles with Amusement Insiders, learning and trusting who is permanent and learning and trusting who is temporary. And that is really difficult for a channel like myself who, and a person like myself who is trying to form bonds and trust and commitment and just even like a team that I can trust with information. And that is a really key part of Amusement Insiders. And I'll touch on that in a bit. But that has been the hardest part of Amusement Insiders, people coming and going. And I think it's no surprise to anyone who truly knows me um, and has seen the people coming and going, coming and going, coming and going, and me forgiving and getting angry, forgiving and getting angry, forgiving and getting angry, that I have attachment issues. Um, um, I have a therapist and I do go to therapy and it is something that I've learned in the last six months that I do attach and I wear my heart on my sleeve and I am an empath and all of this mixed together is a recipe for disaster mentally and I feel it and I've felt it and it is creating a disaster. Um, I don't trust anyone. I uh, Anyone that wants to be friends with me or reaches out to me and wants to hang out, I always assume the worst. And you know what? I have every right to. And it's something that will take me a long time to overcome. And I'm aware of that now. I know that not everyone is bad, and I know that not everyone has ill intentions, but 
when I have a channel like Amusement Insiders and it does have benefits, it is really hard to figure out who is a true friend and who is a fake friend. And I'm not going to touch on this subject at all because this person and I are, are talking again and, you know, things are going really good and they're doing amazing and they deserve only the best now and always. Um, but I lost someone for a while, for a bit, that I thought was, you know, the right thing, and it destroyed me, like, nothing has ever destroyed me in my life, I couldn't sleep, I couldn't eat, I couldn't breathe, I couldn't work, I couldn't go to Wonderland, I couldn't anything, and that was a big realization for me, um, and that's all I'm going to say on that. But I'm very happy with the way things are going. And I'm very happy for this person. And um, yeah, like, so for those of you who have been wondering where the content's been, that's a part of it. Um, I haven't had the energy or the courage or, you know, <laughs> I guess the support is a key thing, uh, the support keyword, to go to Wonderland and want to go to Wonderland and film construction updates and film my speculation videos and all that. Um, but what's really interesting is it's evident that I'm struggling. And some of you viewers have been reaching out to me. And some of you I've met up with. Some of you have sent me really interesting messages. And some of you go to school for some things relating to social media. And some of you have expertise in the areas that I lack. And I made a promise on my podcast, I think three weeks ago, where I wanted to open the channel up to the community. And... I meant this, but with things going on in my life, I was focusing on my mental health and <laughs> how to live this new life and who to trust and who not to trust and all this jazz that comes with being amusement insiders or I guess in general social media, because I bet you a lot of YouTubers and a lot of social media people go through this same thing, who to trust and who not to trust and being used and, and stuff. I've kept all of this a secret from even my friends. In fact, this video is going to be probably a shock to my friend group, even. And that says something. That really does say something. <laughs> but I've had some really good meetings and some good talks with people in the field. Um, working in the amusement industry, working and going to school for social media, and photography, and videography, and I'm making moves, I guess you could say, because I don't have the freedom that I had two years ago, where I don't have to work, <laughs> I have a salary job now, I work a, a, a nine to five, essentially, five days a week salary, and that takes up my life and then amusement insiders has become second and it doesn't it's not second mentally it's one of my favorite accomplishments in life literally and i'm not going anywhere <laughs> in fact i am ensuring that amusement insiders only grows and that we cover the amusement industry and not just canada's wonderland and that when i do cover canada's wonderland it is in a new light, a new definition, a new era. No more hiding behind a screen. No more hiding how I feel. No more laziness. I want to elevate the channel so that when you guys are looking for coverage on something, that I am still and will be the place to go for information. And 
this is important to me and this is coming back to why I struggle with trust and who to let in on my team. It is no surprise to anyone that because of the channel and what I cover and all that, that yes, you end up any channel that, you know, is the main channel of their home park or the main channel of something, they're going to get sources, they're going to get information, they're going to have a whole team of people that are always scouring the web, looking up information left, right and center. And I'm not kidding or over exaggerating when I say amusement insiders is literally an operation. There are people that look up shipping containers. There are people that look up um, trademarks. There's people like it, it's it's a whole process. Like um, the sources I have in the community are I'm very fortunate, and I'm not going to say for which parks, but there are a couple parks where I know the 2024 editions now, and I can't leak them. Eh, I can't post blueprints that you have access to. It's a lesson you learn um, when you're covering a park because there are always consequences. So you have to learn and you have to adapt to how you can leak things and when you can leak things. But those around me that I do trust very closely have seen some of the things that I have on my phone. (laughs) And it is scary who is temporary and who is permanent and learning that for the team because there are certain things you can show people and know okay this is staying and there are certain things you can show people and then they end up getting out because they were only temporary and that again just to stress is the scariest thing I live with operating this channel. It's gone to the point where I hide things from my friends now. I don't tell my friends or people close to me even some of the stuff I know because I'm so terrified of waking up tomorrow and just not knowing that it's going to get out. But with that being said, I have started meeting people that I don't consider friends yet or you know for the strict purpose of business and you know i'm starting you gonna start utilizing contracts and stuff like that ndas so legally it protects you know the information and amusement insiders and then them as well the other side and this is going to allow the channel to flourish a lot more than it is right now because if i could describe the channel currently it is chaotic like it is those movie sequences when the file drawers are all open and there's information and company information out and the company is desperately shredding it um that is uh amusement insiders and it's not that someone's coming after us no it's not it's not that dramatic but it's definitely gotten to the point where i've had no structure is the key word structure there's no structure with amusement insiders it's a big group of people in Discord that I trust and in my friend group. And I just spit out information that I really shouldn't be spitting out. And then it gets out. And it has gotten out. And then I get, like, really disappointed when another channel covers it or um, I'm even just scared that another channel is going to cover it because I busted my butt off for those sources and that information. So... Unfortunately, in the last three weeks, I've completely shut myself down and shut myself out of my own friend group because that's how scared and untrusting I am. And I'm going to, again, work on it. I'm working on it. But I wanted to come out and say, and I guess admit, that yes, things are chaotic right now and there's no structure with Amusement Insiders. And I feel it. And I bet you guys feel it too, like truthfully. Uh, I go from daily uploads to once a week, sometimes not even once a week. That's not structure. I do the podcast some weekends and then don't the other. That's not structure. That's signs of someone struggling, you know, with anxiety and depression and having no control over it and... You know, you guys pay the price. And I'm a perfectionist. 
And that bothers me when I know that I'm messing up and people are aware that I'm messing up. So I'm really thankful for some of the people I've met in the last two to three weeks because some of the best business ideas and channel ideas have come out of people I don't even know yet. And I have really exciting plans, like truthfully. And I'm super excited to step outside of my comfort zone. Like actually step outside my comfort zone. I want the videos to be truthfully me in them. Not this, where there's a screen and you hear my voice. I want you guys to see the real me. And I want you guys to see some other people as well. I am going to build a real Amusement Insiders community. Other talent, other creators, other people, other thoughts, other thought processes. And I really want you guys to enjoy it because it's going to be exciting. And not only that, (laughs) I'm really excited just for you guys to see an improvement in what we're covering not just construction updates. I want you guys to see, honestly, the heart of Canada's Wonderland. Because I feel like, as enthusiasts, we get really blinded by these glasses that we wear of our wants and needs, and we forget how great of a park we have. And I am a part of that problem. You know, Tundra Twister is a really good example of that. Lazy Bear Lodge is another great example of that. No matter how great of an investment the park builds, we're all still really upset about something for no reason. Our standards sometimes are really high, but that's a whole nother video I'll make because I have thoughts and I have been really stressed lately about some of the things I've been seeing in the community on Canada's Wonderland. But I want to really take some of these new people that are going to be joining the team and use them, their talents, not use them. That sounds really bad with the context of the video, but I want to utilize their ability and talents to show you guys a different side of Canada's Wonderland. And when I tell you that I've been sitting down having conversations and brainstorming some really, really cool ideas, I'm not kidding. Now, These ideas are not going to be released tomorrow or this week or maybe even next week. Some of them are starting filming next week, and it's going to take a bit because, you know, I have an editor. I have someone that wants to edit for the channel. I have someone that wants to film for the channel. And I've been holding off on that because, you know, I am stuck in this really weird place where the channel is at a point where it requires daily content and it requires daily work, but I also have a daily job, a salary job, and the channel doesn't make enough to cover, um, you know, focusing on only the channel. But if I do both and I hire a team, then the channel is going to start finally moving forward again and stop being stagnant. I will hit 50,000 subscribers by the year 2025. That is my goal. 50,000 subscribers by 2025. That is what I'm going to aim for. And I am going to do everything in my power to hit that number and prove to you guys that I can be structured and that I can be the content creator that you hit that subscribe button for. The I want to be that person that you guys are all DMing, rooting for. The person that you are stopping in the park, rooting for. Telling me how much my content means to you. Telling you, telling me how much the podcast means to you. How happy it's made you. How much the podcast means to you because it's something to look forward to. And I have failed you. Like, and it's not on purpose. And I know that you guys don't view it that way. And you guys sometimes are way too supportive of me, truthfully. I chose to be a content creator. I can hit delete on this channel if I don't like it. If this truthfully overwhelms me, I can hit delete and quit. 
but I'm not going to do that. And I'm sick of waking up in the morning and knowing where I'm failing on this channel or holding it back as a person and doing nothing to change it. It's time that I start moving forward as an individual and as a channel and challenge both myself and you as viewers. Help me help you and let me help you. I want nothing more than to succeed on this next goal I've set myself. I want to make content almost daily again. And once I get structure, that'll be achievable. So my first goals to tackle in the next 30 days are to build a structured system for my team, myself, um, and create a whole system that then I can train and utilize to hire and bring on talent to my team to assist me in getting daily content out there. I want to find, and this is the key word, the right people that aren't looking to profit off of you guys. I know people, and I have people, that their sole interest is to profit. And that gives me the ick. And I remember not to say, I'm not going to say anything specific, but I had to sit down with a theme park um, person, and they asked me what I wanted. Um, and I said, you know, I don't want a free season pass. I don't want a free meal plan. I don't want free all season fast lane. I want behind the scenes content. I want content that I can show my viewers that is beneficial to them in turn for not, you know, leaking certain things. That is truthfully what I want. It would mean nothing more than me to be able to work closer with theme parks in North America. Um, to showcase them better, and that benefits my audience and not me. And I know it in turn that my channel is always going to benefit me, so you know that's, that's also a weird way of wording things, but hopefully you get what I'm trying to say here. Which also brings me to my third point. Once I have structure, and once I have a Wonderland team, I am bringing back the North American Influencer team. And I'm not going to launch it all at once like I did before. I'm on the media list for, you know, a good portion of theme parks in North America, and it's time that I find the right talent to join the channel and vlog their experiences at those parks and showcase what's new. It's also time that I start covering some of the stuff at parks in North America as well. There's two parks, for example, in the Cedar Fair chain where I know exactly what they're getting in 2024, and it's time that I start covering that. So, Kings Island, Carowinds, I'm coming for you. I'm kidding. But nonetheless, I truthfully am super excited for the future of Amusement Insiders. And I promise you guys, it's only going to get better from here. I don't want to say too, too much, and I don't want to promise too, too much, but my main focuses are structure, team, and goals. And you're going to see it. Starting next week, we begin filming, and I'm going to show you a different style of Amusement Insiders. No more just construction updates. No more just survey markings. That's staying, and that will always stay because that is one of my key interests. So please don't take it as me being like, I'm over that. No. But you're going to see business covered about Cedar Fair in a whole new light. I'm talking to someone right now that I just started talking to, and they started talking about um, their interest in the business side of the theme park and how they writ up this whole Cedar Fair business plan. And they're probably watching right now, <laughs> but honestly, that just like reminded me of me when I first started the channel. And I truthfully want to talk to this person more about, you know, potentially coming on the podcast and discussing 
a lot of business sides of things and not, not just being Wonderland, but Seer Fair is a business, theme parks is a business, Wonderland is a business and going really in depth and even having some videos discussing all this. So these are just some ideas and there are some really cool ideas that I refuse to say in today's video just because I'd rather it be a surprise when they come up, but I promise you guys, <laughs> you're about to see a whole different side of Amusement Insiders, and it's going to stay like this. So let me build my structure over the next week or two, and hopefully you guys enjoy the content that starts coming out next week and the week after, and honestly, join the Discord server. Join the Discord server and put your suggestions in the suggestions tab, talk to me, give me any sort of feedback. I am honestly open to everything. As long as you're not crapping on me um, and trying to hurt my mental health, I am going to listen. If you have constructive feedback, I have always listened. I've taken ideas. Half the ideas you've seen lately are from viewers giving me ideas. So uh, again, I'm really excited and I want this to be a true community project. I want to provide exactly what you guys are looking for, which involves elevating myself. But I think I've rambled enough. This is the problem with me. I refuse to script myself. And when you refuse to script yourself, you end up ranting and rambling and saying things sometimes that maybe you shouldn't. But nonetheless, there's my rant and ramble. Um, and again, thank you for believing in me. To me, it always seems like you guys believe in me a little too much, and I don't deserve the amount of credit you guys give me, but it honestly means the world to me. How much you guys support me, how much you guys look up to my content, and just the kind things that you guys say, like, it goes a long way. <laughs> yeah, especially these last three weeks, but yeah, I really appreciate it. I'm not going to let you guys down. Have a good one, guys. See you in the next video. Bye.